Yo, what is going on guys? Today I've got you another Infinite Warfare video back on the channel. Now today guys, what we're going to be going over, or what I'm going to be mostly showing you throughout this video, is the easiest ways to get yourself a Juggernaut medal within Infinite Warfare. As you guys know, in Advanced Warfare we had a medal system similar to this one, or practically exactly the same, but they were just named different. For example, the 30 kill streak medal in Advanced Warfare was called a Vicious Medal, and you guessed it, the Juggernaut medal, what we're going for today, is the 30 kill streak medal in this game. In Advanced Warfare we had the DNA bomb, which was a 30 gun streak but in this game it's kind of different because we have the deatomizer strike which I will make a separate video on if you guys would really like that on how to get one very easily which is a 25 gun streak with only six specific weapon variants within infinite warfare now there may be more for you guys playing the full release version of the game if you find this video want tips on the juggernaut medal I'm here to help you guys today because in the beta as well you can only get a certain medal within one round as you guys know or maybe don't know if you go through a round transition system within infinite warfare Warfare in the beta, like say for a fact you get to 100 points or the time limit runs out for the first half of the game in domination, your medals reset. I only just clutched the Juggernaut medal, which is a 30 kill streak, and I figured since you can get the Juggernaut medal with every gun, I might as well make a video for this, and then hopefully you guys can take away some tips of obviously learning the maps when you're calling in your score streaks and stuff to actually get that gun streak, and hopefully get lucky with one of those weapon variants for the Deatomizer strike. All right, so I've rambled on way too much already there. So the first thing I suggest to you guys I'm gonna go in mandatory order of what I think is completely more necessary and more important first and then the less important stuff last because then you guys can choose what you want to apply but I definitely recommend the score streak system that I've got on since your score streak kills apply towards the medal system like I previously said can't stress that enough you want to be using UAV bombardment and RC8 what the RC8 is is basically you can have it AI controlled or you can control it yourself as you'll see me doing the gameplay I control it it's a very good walking mini tank where you can put a right shield up in front of yourself it lasts 30 seconds that is kind of a long time if you think about it in terms of getting a lot of kills with what it does it shoots out a rocket cannon out of its hand and it kills literally everything around that area but I believe you have to actually be quite accurate with it and actually land the shot on the enemy but it kills them always in one shot there's no like flak jacket that can avoid not being killed in the one shot if you land the shot on the enemy it will definitely kill them and a lot of people tend to want to come to you because you're a slow mover when you're in this suit as I've just got the kill streak there right now the RC8 and then they want to kill you obviously so you get a lot of traffic coming to you as enemies and then you'll be earning your score streaks at the same time of getting all them kills because usually when you're actually getting this kill streak, when you get the RCA, as you've seen me do, I get a few kills before I actually call it in and then them kills contribute towards the UAV in the next cycle of kill streaks, the next batch and everything, so it's definitely useful. And then the next amount of kills that you actually get in the RC8, even though they don't get as much points towards your score streak as normal kills with your gun do, you're getting that many, or if you're in a good game and you get enough, you usually find yourself in a position where you can get an easy UAV to start the next cycle of kill streaks. Whether that be you've actually cleared out the spawns or you can predict where they spawn when you get out of control in the RC8 or if it's AI controlled then you have the best of both worlds kind of if it's not stealing your kills and then for the bombardment I recommend you guys kind of saving it until you're in a tricky situation or just saving it unless you are just in case so you can clear out an area of enemies say for a fact if they're going to push up to you and then that will make you safe in a situation again and it will get you more kills towards the medal. The second tip I want to give you guys kind of applies to the mental attributes or attitude of when you're going to get a juggernaut medal personally I don't think you should set out and say I'm going to get a juggernaut medal it's too much pressure on yourself and then you're more likely to choke just go on a streak and get in the flow and kind of you know know the map and know the players that you're playing as you can see I'm not really pushing up too much and I'm not really kind of camping too much either I'm pushing up to the positions where I know and I'm confident with these types of players in this lobby some may say oh they're really bad but I'm knowing and adapting to the situations that I'm handed and dealing with the cards I'm dealt. This kind of leads on to the next tip. The third tip that I want to give you guys is about the actual playstyle. You want to play passive aggressive. What I mean by this is when you can actually push up, you definitely want to be making moves, but don't think you can just sit in the spawn or you can kind of just sit back and wait for them to come to you at head glitches because they will predict what you're doing after a while. You constantly got to keep moving and there will be situations where you've either got to push up and take risks and then kind of hold down a position, then push up and take more risks, and that will definitely help you in terms of them not knowing where you are and developing stages around the map and power positions which is definitely a really important factor as the time to kill in this game is very inconsistent and developing on from that point that I made right there the fourth point I want to give you guys is 
use the claw or use a rig that you're comfortable with. Personally, I think the claw is the most overpowered and does the most damage when shooting it. I feel like the minigun turrets, as you play as that robot character where you have two miniguns or two guns in each hand, are very weak as machine guns. But the claw, it kind of only takes a few shots and I've got a seven man with the claw. I personally find it more comfortable to use than any other rig and it's very powerful so it can clear out them rooms, them situations by just spraying as it has a very fast fire rate for a singular weapon as well and also deals the damage that you need to deal on the enemies to actually kill them before they get enough shots to actually kill you. The final tip I want to give you guys is actually covering everything class setup wise meaning use a weapon that actually can do damage at range and up close. For example everybody starts out with the NV4 and has it from level 1 so why not use that? I use it in the majority of the gameplay in the background as you guys have been able to see we're coming up to my Juggernaut Medal Obtainment right now in the gameplay in the background that I get with an SMG for the last kill and yet again I have to take a risk leading back to my prior points but that's not the point I'm trying to make. As you guys know in this game ADSing and the movement can be very useful so I recommend all ADS attachments whether that be quick draw, stock, suppressor even if you want to keep off the radar like I had but I don't have scavenger so I have also got extending mags as well as suppressor, stock and quick draw but also for perks what you want to be using is I believe recon because recon is a very useful perk as the radar is very inconsistent in this game and also you want to be using dexterity in the first perk tier I recommend hardline in the second perk tier to get everything faster score streak wise and also if you can't see the enemies because it's like Call of Duty ghosts and all the colors kind of blend together with the map and the characters all as one use pinpoint as that outlines the enemy in red and it kind of shows you a mini health bar of how much health the enemy actually has so you know how many shots roughly to put into the enemy whether he's one shot two shot or you need to put the three shots into his chest at any range with a gun like the MV4 or maybe even four shots if you're not shooting him in the chest and you get like a shot in the leg the hip or whatever but that basically concludes today's video guys I hope you all enjoyed if you did slap a like in the video down below and I hope this helps you out let me know if you want any more tips and tricks videos, say for example for the Deatomizer Strike or any particular challenge or any particular kind of playstyle that you guys want me to break down or even a best class setup for a certain weapon category or a certain specific weapon. And that concludes everything I wanted to say in this video. Thank you all for watching again. I love all your faces as usual. Peace out.